Thanks. Thanks, Mrs. Hicks. Thanks, Grandma. Bye, Grandma. Hi, Bye. Yay. Confirmation class, this is not the ideal way for us to teach, but uh, we've had way too many Wednesdays where the weather has been bad, and so Jillian Hi. agreed to come here. It's Friday afternoon, you're mm -hmm. off school, and, and we're going to video a lesson, and I'm going to ask you to, uh, we're not going to do a full 75 minutes like we normally do for class. Uh, we're going to do a brief one, but please, please follow this. So we're, we're behind on getting ready for First Communion, and this becomes our opportunity to catch you up. So let's begin with prayer. Uh, gracious Heavenly Father, as uh, we uh, have an opportunity to learn more and more about the love you have for us in Jesus Christ, and this great gift that we call Communion, we pray that you'll be at the homes of each of these Confirmation students that's watching this video, that you'll help them be attentive, that you'll help them be alert, that uh, they're on their own in their homes, that they can still learn, and that we can learn together about the great love you have for us in Jesus Christ. Bless us. Help Jillian and I do a great job as we try to share, and uh, we pray your blessings as we trust in you and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Jillian, you've got a Bible in front of you. I've yep. got mine. Bye -bye. You need your Bible. So if you don't have it, pause the video, go get your Bibles. Where are we going to turn to? Um, I think you said 1 Corinthians 11. 1 something. Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11 is the longest section of the scripture that talks about communion. We looked at this the last time together. We're going to do some review, and then we're going to add some new things that we didn't learn the last time that we were together. So follow along. 1 Corinthians 11, beginning in verse 17. You remember who wrote 1 Corinthians? Um, wasn't it? Wasn't First Corinthians a letter? A letter sent to the church at Corinth. Who sent that letter? Wasn't it Paul? Paul sent that letter. So this is a letter to Paul to a church that he had formed, and they were getting communion wrong. Do you remember that? Yes. And it comes across as a harsh letter at the beginning, but then he sets them right. So let's follow along. But in the following instructions, I do not commend you, because when you come together, it's not for the better, but for the worse. For in the first place, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you. I believe it in part. For there must be factions among you in order that those who are genuine among you may be recognized. When you come together, it's not the Lord's Supper that you eat. For in eating, each one goes ahead with his own meal. One goes hungry, another gets drunk. What, do you not have houses to eat in and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I commend you in this? No, I will not. Jillian, you may remember the last time that mm -hmm. we met, we talked about the church was made up of very poor people, mm -hmm. very wealthy people, and it appears as if what was happening, at the end of every day, they were getting together uh -huh. to pray together, to sing, to offer encouragement to one another, and they were having their evening meal together. Mm -hmm. And those who were slaves came with almost nothing to eat. Mm -hmm. Those who came from great wealth brought these lavish spreads that included quite a bit of wine. Mm -hmm. and, and they were calling that communion. And Paul said, no, 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 that is not communion. Uh, uh, it's a meal you're having together, but it's not communion. And then he directs them, this is what communion is. And uh, here is begins with, follow along in verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. Does this sound familiar, Jillian? Yeah. Where do, you, where do we hear these words? We use this at communion. At communion. When you're headed to communion, these are almost exactly the words that our pastors use Sunday after Sunday in what we call the words of institution, the words where Jesus began communion and commanded its, its practice in the church. So it gets, for I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in, in my blood. Do this 
as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, the cup of wine, you proclaim the Lord's death until it comes. These words are almost exactly the same words that are in the Gospels yeah. when the Last Supper is recorded for us when Jesus began communion. Uh, and, and then there become three critical verses that Paul puts together that we really need to stop. And I'm going to ask you the same question I asked the last time we met. Take a look at each verse and figure out what is the word in this verse that we really need to come to grips with if we're going to understand communion? I remember that question. Well, good. Whoever, therefore, eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. What's the key word there? Um, when, uh, body and blood. Okay, body and blood is creed. We want to look at that, but what do we... What's the wrong way to do it, it says here, in an... Unworthy. Unworthy. So the right way is... Um, a worthy manner. A worthy manner. And we're going to need to come to grips. What does it mean to celebrate communion in a worthy manner? Then verse 28. Look again for that key word that we're going to have to come to grips with. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. What well, we got to figure out and define? Uh, examine himself. Examine himself. We've got to figure out how to do that, right? Because mm -hmm. Paul has said, what do you got to do before you come and eat and drink? you got to... you got to examine yourself. Examine yourself, exactly. And then verse 29. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. You don't want to eat and drink judgment on yourself, so what do you have to do? You have to... <laughs> discern the 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 NIV the New English version that we were reading until recent years in uh -huh. our church said you had to recognize the body and blood so there are three keys here in verses 27 28 and 29 the first one is worthy the second one is examine yourself and the third one is discern or recognize the body now, the last time we met, we dropped to the third one. Mm -hmm. We said, how do you recognize the body and blood of Christ in communion? Well, there are four words that appear over and over every time we read about communion. What are the four words? Body, body and blood, blood, bread and wine. Bread and wine. Uh, typically, we rephrase them this way. Bread and wine body and blood. And link them there. Those are the four. Bread, wine, body, blood. Now, a great segment of Christianity says there are two things in communion. And they look and say, when, take eat, this is my body. Take drink, this is my blood. And so they would teach that there are two things available in communion. And when you're taking communion, you receive the two things. You receive the body and blood of Jesus. Remember which church teaches that? I don't remember the name, but I remember you said you said. It was the Catholic Church that teaches that. Okay. In the Catholic Church, when they serve communion, what's there on the altar? Body. The body and blood of Christ. You think they'd be serious about communion? Yes. Yeah. You think they would be very reverent about it? Uh-huh. Absolutely, they take it very, very seriously. But, but the passage doesn't just say, take heed, this is my body, drink, this is my blood. The passage says, whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup of wine, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so there's another set of churches that said there are two things that are there. Bread and wine. And the bread and the wine remind us of the body and blood of mm -hmm. Jesus. Uh, and they would teach there are two things, but it's not body and blood. For them, it's bread and wine. Yep. Do you remember which churches teach that? I only remember the last one. <laughs> but, well, it's, it's primarily a great portion of the Protestant church, particularly the Baptist tradition, that teaches that communion is a reminder of the body and blood yep. of Christ. It's a memorial. When you go there, you're reminded and remember what Jesus said. Do this in remembrance of me. Uh, but 
The scripture really talks about all four. It says, mm -hmm. take heed, this is my body, whenever you eat this bread, and take drink, this is my blood, whenever you drink this cup of wine. Do you know there's a, a great passage that summarizes it from the chapter before? Do you remember where that is? Uh, no. If it's the chapter before, it's 1 Corinthians 10, and it's 1 Corinthians 10, verse 16. Well, I, I, I hope that's right. All right. It says there, the cup of blessing, and what's in that cup of blessing? It's a cup of um, wine. wine. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood, the blood of Christ? And the bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? What we in the Lutheran Church teach is that there are four things you get when you receive mm -hmm. communion. You receive, with the bread, you receive the body of Christ, and with the wine, you receive the blood of Christ, and all the benefits that come from it. And it's really summarized well there in 1 Corinthians 10, chapter 6, or 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16. So what we've done is kind of reviewed that passage that says, uh, that reminds us that we are to recognize or discern the body and blood of Christ. Now let's go back to, to the verse before it, and where that's 1 Corinthians 11, 27. Whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup in an unworthy manner, so we want to avoid the unworthy manner, and we want to participate in a worthy manner. Now, here's the challenge. Mm -hmm. In the church, or in, in the world, if you're worthy of something, what does it mean? You, um, you, You've done enough. done enough. So that if you're worthy of a grade, it means you did mm -hmm. everything that was necessary to earn that grade. Like you studied or something. You studied you've worked hard, you've done everything possible to earn it. Uh -huh. Can you and I do anything to earn God's love? No. No. Now we want to, we want to honor God's love mm -hmm. by doing good things for Him, but can you earn it? No. No. It's given. Yeah. It's given freely when Jesus died and rose for us. So here's the key to understanding the, the word worthy. Mm -hmm. It's equal to faith. Uh, Make sense? Yeah. Whoever has faith is worthy. Is it something you do? No. It's a gift that God has given you. So that worthiness means having faith in confidence in what God has said. Uh, I think I've got it here. Oops. I did not get it off of... You want to greet everybody? In fact, here's what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. I want everybody, while I step out of the room and get the, the worksheet that I wanted to review with everyone, I didn't pick it off the printer, I want you to stop. I want you to simply read this over and take an opportunity to go explain to your parents what are the four things that you receive in communion. Okay. Jillian, can you go and stop the camera for just a second? Okay. How do you pause it? I don't know. You're going to have to figure that out. Oh, great. I'm not good with cameras. <laughs> and you all should know you just this. Wanted, you want to do a song for everybody while I go get the mm, stuff? No, not particularly. Hi, everybody. Hi. Uh, I don't think I know how to pause this. I'm sorry. I'm not smart enough with the cameras. Uh, not smart enough. I'm smart enough with everything else, not cameras. Bobby, I'm smart enough with everything else, but not cameras. <laughs> cameras come hate and, me. Come and have a seat. They I'm hate back. me. I got my sheet. Am I, I still on camera? Yes, you're still All on right, camera. All right, you come and Yay. have a seat. I want to be cute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no one trusts me with a camera. <laughs> All right. Let me stop at least not cameras. Here, here's what I've got. When I sent this lesson to you, the link to it, I've also sent an attachment. You need to have that attachment in front of you. It's a sheet that will look something like Ooh, this. You have a sheet for me? And it says the Lord's Supper, and it says worthiness, and I've got one for Yay! you, Jillian. What I want I you to do is there are some true and false. Now the key 
is at the top it says the Lord's wor Supper, worthiness equals, what was the word? Uh, what did you say, faith? Faith. Mm -hmm. okay. Faith, faithfulness, either of those. Would that be faith that the earth is round? No. It would be talking about faith in, in, God. in, in Jesus in and what he's done for you. Yeah. So there are eight true and false questions. So pause right now. Go through them. They're not easy. Some of them are difficult. I don't expect you to get all eight of them right. After you've gone and made your choices, then turn the camera back on, and we'll be going through them one at a time. Okay. Now, you're not going to have the chance to, to look at them. I'm going to ask you, and you're going to have to give a reason. Oh, no. You think you're going to get them all right? <laughs> Maybe. All right, you'll do I, your I, best. I need a pencil or all right. a pen or something. I've got a pen for you right here. Thank you. All right. It says, read 1 Corinthians 11, 27. That's that verse that talks about worthiness, being worthy communion. Here's the first true and false. Forgiveness is assured by communion as a constant state of the believer. Is that the same question you've got? Oh, yes, I just didn't answer it. I have no idea. All right. What do you think? I, I, I just said I had no idea. Well, give me an answer. I'm not going to let you sit uh, on the fence. Um, Forgiveness is assured by communion as a constant state of the belief. I don't even get what that means. Okay. Well, forgiveness. Are you forgiven? Yes. Sometimes would you doubt that? Uh, maybe. maybe times there are times you feel, yeah. hey, I'm not very worthy of forgiveness. Yeah. Would you want somebody to come along and say, don't doubt it. Uh -huh. You are. Is the believer always in a state of forgiveness? Yes. Absolutely. So, so forgiveness is assured. You know, sometimes we worry about saying, true. you know, I've not been good enough. So, yes, this would be true. Yay. Forgiveness is assured by communion as a constant state I of the believer. Okay. Number two, sins, doubts, and failings make a person unworthy. Um, false? False. If we said... Worthiness is faith. Then it wouldn't be no Unworthiness would having no faith. No faith, right. Can a person of faith sin? Yes. You and I do it. All yeah. of us recognize we do that all the time. Uh, do people of faith sometimes have doubts and kind yep. of go? I, I had a doubt that I couldn't do my little writing thing. Well, you, know, you just doubt yourself at yeah, times. Like, uh, yeah. Do people of faith fail? Yes. Absolutely. So, sin, doubts, and failings don't make you unworthy. Yep. Uh, in fact, communion is for people who are sinful, who fail, who have even doubt. Number three, forgiveness is held back until we receive communion. That is false. When you're, you're exactly right. It is false. Why is it false? Because we're forgiven even if we don't do communion. Exactly. That To, to say that the only way to be forgiven is to go to communion would be to say those who have not been received communion aren't forgiven, or but you are. Or if you're saying it's a little kid, it's not forgiven. And right. if they die when they're a little kid, that's false. You're, you're yeah. exactly right. Forgiveness is, is not held back. The, the, the statement is forgiveness is held back until we receive communion. That's exactly false. Number four, the only unworthiness is unbelief. Uh, true? Absolutely. The only thing that makes you unworthy of communion is not believing. Not believing that you're a sinner. Not believing that Jesus died to take that sin away for you. Number five, personal preparation to receive communion is more important than the divine action of God who's present to forgive sins. So that's saying what you do getting ready is more important than what God's doing. Okay, then it's false. You're correct, it's false. Because who's at work in communion? God is. God's at work for people who sin and fail and have doubts. Which is basically everyone. That's all of us, mm -hmm. if we're honest about ourselves. Mm -hmm. That uh, So personal preparation to receive communion is more important than divine action of God who's present to forgive sinners? Mm -hmm. False. Number six. Persons are worthy to co communion if they believe they are sinners and that Christ has earned forgiveness for them through his suffering and death on the cross. True. True. Yeah. Because remember what we said worthiness is uh, faith. faith. 
faith that Jesus is your Savior and my Savior from sin. Number seven, worthiness is a mark we achieve. I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. Well, is worthiness is something you do and something you achieve? Yes. No. Yes, I don't know. Well, most of the time that's what the world teaches. Worthiness means you've done enough. Yeah. In communion, worthiness is a mark we achieve. Is it? Is it? Um, well, you have to have faith to be worthy, so I guess yeah. is, is, is faith something? No. Isn't faith a gift from God? Yeah, it is a gift. But, yeah. Worthiness is a mark we achieve. No. It's false. It's false. That's false. Okay. That statement is false. Now, and it goes against the way we typically think. Getting yeah. a great, being worthy of a great grade depends upon being, doing all the work. Or doing work or actually know what you're doing. You know, getting an A means you've achieved it, right? You can't you're worthy. You can't without knowing what you're doing. Okay. Well, here, worthiness, what if I said worthiness is the mark that Jesus achieved? Whoa. We're that worthy not because of what we've done, but because what Jesus did yes. for us. that is true. Eight, worthy means good enough. False. That's, you, you're exactly right. Uh, worthiness for communion does not mean good enough. Worthiness for communion means that Jesus was good enough for you and me. Not easy, but what's the key? Worthiness equals faith. Faith, yeah. faith in Jesus. That's exactly what I wrote. The, excellent, excellent. I hope this has been helpful for you. It's not as good as us being together and being able to talk about uh, class and answer your questions, but Jillian, thank you for being okay. here. And uh, what I'd like you to do is uh, to remember those three key verses, 27, 28, and 29. 27 says one is worthy to go to communion, uh -huh. and worthiness is equal to Faith in, faith, faith in Jesus. So the, and then the next verse talks about uh, examine himself. We're going to look at that when we're together as a class, saying how do you examine? And then verse 29 of 1 Corinthians 11 reminds us we need to recognize the body. Recognize that with the bread we receive the true body of Christ with all its benefits, and with the wine we receive the true blood, that all four are present in communion. Thanks for watching. If you've got some questions, you can email me. You can give me a call. You can call me even on my cell, 573-579-0081. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. I think the only thing I can do with the camera is...